Sunday, 72 years ago, these were some of the headlines. The State Department last night warned the men in the Kremlin that it would be dangerous for them to underestimate the West's power and determination to take united action against attack. The department said it wanted to dispel serious misconceptions in the mind of the leaders of the Soviet Union about the physical and moral strength of the Western democracies. Its warning was set forth in blunt and unmistakable terms in the 6,500-word white paper on the North Atlantic Treaty, which the U.S. and seven, possibly 11 other powers, will sign in Washington April 4th. The 20-year pact published Friday is the greatest defense alliance ever proposed in peacetime. A poll of available senators last night showed 52 for and 2 against ratification of the North Atlantic Treaty. This 26 to 1 ratio was far greater than the two-thirds approval needed for ratification, but it did not mean that the pact and corollary arms measures will breeze through the Senate without thorough debate. In late success, New York, Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei V. Vizhinsky and his number one helper Andrei A. Gormiko are expected to lead a Soviet fight on the North Atlantic Treaty in the United Nations Assembly next month. The Soviet Union has not yet informed the UN who will make up the delegation. It never does until the delegation is on its way. Six Port Huron, Michigan police were dismissed from the force yesterday, a few hours after their arrest on charges of stealing lumber in their squad cars. Police Captain Daniel L. O'Leary said the lumber had been taken from two local yum- lumber yards over a period of a year and a half. He said the men were on duty. When the thefts occurred, the wood was to be used to remodel the men's homes. The six officers pled guilty at a municipal court hearing on the larceny charges. A Dartmouth College junior formally charged with manslaughter last night following the death of another student in a dormitory brawl. Five other students, including three Husky football players, were suspended. A warrant charging first-degree manslaughter, punishable by up to 30 years imprisonment, was issued against the three. The United Daughters of the Confederacy sadly hauled down its battle colors yesterday and told state officials in Virginia they could move General Stonewall Jackson's stuffed horse from Richmond to Lexington. The state had given the UDC until April 1st to move its war relics, among them the stuffed remains of Little Sorrel, from the Robert E. Lee Camp Museum to Virginia Military Institute. After a series of skirmishes within the ranks, the UDC's executive board beat down some stout opposition to the proposal and confirmed an earlier tentative vote to transfer the relics. However, only the stuffed horse was to go to VMI. The other relics will be housed at other Confederate museums in Richmond. And swallows in groups of 50 to 75 returned yesterday to the old mission of San Juan Capistrano in their 170th annual migration. Mission bells rang and hundreds of sightseers and visitors herald the return of the birds on St. Joseph's Day. And those some of the day's top news stories as reported in the newspapers of Sunday, March 20th, 1949, on your radio, Screen Director's Playhouse production of The Perfect Marriage, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater. My business, darling, but I do want to be helpful. Now, you get a good property settlement from Dale. But I don't want anything. I'm not even sure I want a divorce. Oh, of course you want a divorce. Suppose you lose your job. Suppose Dale goes ahead and marries Gloria. She'll have everything she wants. Well, what's Gloria got to do with it? <gasps> you didn't know. Didn't know what? Uh, well, uh, well, uh, you see, well... <laughs> I thought that was the reason for the divorce. Naturally, I I didn't dream. Oh, my dear, I'd be the last person on earth to tell you that... uh, that, What uh, is it, Mabel? Well, it's just that you've been blind. Blind. What have I been blind about? Well, while you were in Paris, your husband and Gloria dined out every night in an obscure restaurant. (laughs) So what of it? They had dinner together. But, my dear, they scoffed. They giggled. Sheila Jameson told me that one night she saw the... But, Jenny, will you listen to me, please? Gloria and I just had dinner together. I'm not concerned with dinner. It's what happened after dinner that bothers me. Well, you were in Paris and I was lonely. Well, not for long you were. Well, I just wanted somebody to talk to. 
Dale Williams, I know your little talks. I married you after one of them. <laughs> That'll teach me to keep my big mouth shut. And if you think I'm going to dinner with you and that, 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 that woman, when you have another thought coming. Well, then stay home for all I care. Oh, no, I'm not going to stay home. I'm going to Macombo. Oh, wait. Gil, come in. Jenny, it's me, Gil. Beat it. What do you want? One side, Chubby. I've got a date with your wife. <laughs> she isn't here. Well, I'll wait. What are you doing here? This happens to be my home. Well, according to what Jenny told me over the phone a couple of hours ago, <laughs> you'll be vacating soon. So, I'll just make myself comfortable. Now, where's your bourbon? Oh, it's right over there in the... Oh, that does it. That does it. Oh, saying a Dale, uh, where's Jenny? I haven't seen her in years. You? Is that you? Oh, Hello, yes, Gloria. Mary, this We've is got Dale. Years of catching up. Remember that date for tonight? Well, here I well, am. Well, how would you like the oh, Mocombo? Oh, dream. Oh, no, no. Jenny won't be with us. And Dale. Uh, just a minute, Gloria. What is it? If you hear somebody trying to get in before 2 o'clock. Yeah? Shoot him. It won't be me. <laughs> Listening to the Hollywood Screen Director's presentation of The Perfect Marriage, starring Loretta Young in her original role with Robert Bailey, and introducing the director of the film, Lewis Allen. From 72 years ago, March 20th, 1949, the conclusion next on this Saturday edition of Classic Radio Theater. While you have free time and you're sitting at home and you ponder what kind of gifts to buy for someone, PatriotDepot.com has you covered from puzzles, games, novelty items. If you're looking for some unique style items when it comes to the president, for more, you can check out PatriotDepot.com. Call 844-377-8052. That's 844-377-8052. Or PatriotDepot.com. Use promo code USA. If you enjoy our Classic Radio Theater broadcasts and want to start building a collection of your own, go to ClassicRadio.stream. That's ClassicRadio.stream. There you'll find links to great classic radio collections on CD, along with links to great reading on classic radio, plus classic radio theater on demand. Check out our webpage, available now at classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. And enjoy. Welcome to Tax Talk with Hollywood legend Bob Eubanks. You know, as part of Hollywood for a long time, I've seen my fair share of celebrities get in trouble with the IRS. Well, there's one name I trust, the Tax Defense Group. They're the most trusted name in tax. So if you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS, you really need to call my friends at the Tax Defense Group. Ignoring the IRS is not the solution. They can garnish your paycheck, levy your bank accounts, seize your home or business. But the Tax Defense Group could put a stop to all of that and tailor a program that would reduce your tax debt to pennies on the dollar. You gotta love that. So don't just take my word for it. Call them. Find out for yourself. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And they're open 24 hours a day because they know that tax debt doesn't sleep either. Call now for your free and confidential tax analysis from the most trusted name in tax. Call 800-832-1594. 800-832-1594. Our U.S. Constitution is amazing. It's full of what's called negative rights, designed to protect us from the corrupt powers of a dictatorship. Like our right to worship our own God, not some official state religion. Our right to prevent the government from seizing our property without paying fair market value for it. Or our right to be tried by a jury of our peers, people like us, not by some star tribunal. And that's why America has become the richest, most just society in the world. Other countries force so-called positive rights onto their citizens. These enable one group to take from another group their free speech, money, and choice by using government force. Socialists love wielding this power over people. Sometimes we take our freedoms for granted, but we can lose our Bill of Rights and our Constitution and become like Venezuela or North Korea, failed, brutal socialist regimes. We need your help to spread the good news about our amazing U.S. Constitution. Help us take back America. Go to OurAmericanRights.com. Brought to you by the American Media Council. 
Jimmy Stewart will be with us for our Sunday Classic Radio Theater, an episode of The Six Shooter from 67 years ago, March 21st, 1954, The Duel at Lockwood. That'll be on our Sunday edition, but right now we wrap up our trip to the movies with the Screen Director's Playhouse, 72 years ago, March 20th, 1949, Bob Bailey and Loretta Young in The Perfect Marriage. Yeah, let's dance. Oh, no, I'd rather sit here and look at you. Oh. If I say you're more beautiful than ever, you'll think I'm lying. And if I say you're not, <laughs> I will be. Oh, don't stop it, Gil. I love it. I love every word of it. <laughs> oh, I've been saving a lot of words for you, Jenny. I've been traveling the world over. Oh, what for? Collecting bird eggs. Bird's eggs? Well, sure, sure, you love it. Oh, I'm an expert, but we'll talk about that some other time. Uh, right now, I want to talk about you and me. Well, maybe we'd better talk about bird's eggs. Now, look, heartbreak gal, you are going to marry me. Oh, Gil, I don't know if I ever want to marry anybody again. I've had a long wait, Jenny. I... What's the matter, Jenny? Look who's sitting down over there. Dale and Gloria. You know, Gil, something tells me your waiting days are over. Dale, did you know they'd be here? Ah, uh, in a word. What word? Uh, yes. After everything you told me and you still can't bear to have Jenny out of your sight. Well, I was just kind of curious, that's all. Well, you can be curious without me. Good night. Oh, no, please, Gloria. Look, we won't stay. I- I'm very sorry. It was just an impulse. I don't know why I put up with you. Because we're pals. I got news for you, kid. I won't be a pal to any man. Well, you could be more than a pal to me, Gloria. I mean that. <laughs> Well, let's get busy and see if we can make a deal. <laughs> oh, oh, good Lord, they're coming over here. Enter one ex-friend. Oh, now, Gloria, please, don't make a scene. I won't unless she starts it. Well, Gloria. Oh, Jenny, <laughs> darling. Oh, your hat is positively stunning. My old one, isn't it? I should have returned it, dear. Oh. It just matches your gown. <laughs> Does Dale bring you here often, Gloria? No, he usually hides me away in a little saloon near the Bowery. Oh, the Bowery. Oh, well, isn't that so nice to feel at home in one's surroundings? <laughs> but don't be embarrassed, darling. I'm not, really. Oh? I know you're just unhappy over losing Dale. Shall we put up the cutlery? Good evening, Dale. Good evening. Mm-hmm. Hello, Gil. What have you been doing? Enjoying it. Uh, now, let's cut out this double talk and get down to cases. You see, uh, Jenny and I are going to get hitched as soon as she unloads you, Dale. Uh, uh, that is your name, isn't it? Uh, yes, Goop. Uh, Gil, Gil, th- there's no reason to tell him now. Why not? Uh, because in your own simple language, my simple friend, I also have an announcement to make. As soon as I unhitch Jenny, Gloria and I are getting married. <coughs> Would somebody buy me a good stiff drink? No, no, better than that. Let's have a party. Fine. Let's go up to my hotel. I have a chair, some gin, and a bathtub. No, thanks. (laughs) I never drink gin out of bathtubs. Mm, My place is worse. No furniture? No bathtub. Hey, wait a minute. (laughs) We got a home, haven't we, Jenny? Yes. And besides, Gil might like to see the rest of the place. I don't like this room any better than the others. Well, you don't? No. Then we'll change them all, dear. Hmm. I think I like this love seat, though. Oh. We'll keep it. You stay away from that love seat. Gloria and I are going to build a room around that. Come here, darling. Huh? Oh, this is the way it will always be. Oh. Sitting here in front of the fireplace, Jenny. <laughs> Wait a minute. My arms around you. You? Like this. And as you gaze up into my eyes, yes. I'll kiss you. Like this. Hey, don't hold her like that. Uh, you keep out of this. Yes, what are you getting so excited about? Well, he's trying to kiss my wife. Trying nothing, he's doing it. And it's about time I did the same to you. Yo, wait a minute. Now what's wrong? That's no way for him to kiss my wife. Why are you so worried? He'll throw her sacroiliac out of joint. <laughs> The only trouble with you is too much Jenny. What do you mean? If you can worry about her sacroiliac while I'm kissing you, it's time for little Gloria to bow out. Oh, no, wait a minute, Gloria. Wait a minute. Don't go. <laughs> Love is quarrel. No. Just a change in plans, that's all. Oh, well, in case you're interested, I haven't changed mine. For your information, <laughs> I am not interested. Oh, I see. Furthermore, I am going to bed. Oh, not in this house, In not. this house. In I... the study. Oh. Good night. <laughs> Well, Jenny, darling. Yes, Gil? Uh, before we go ahead with plans for our future, yes. there's something that you ought to know. Go on, Gil. Well, 
Once when I was collecting bird eggs, yes. it was in Sheboygan.